They did forced sterilizations here. Welcome to Michigan. This is Coldwater State Penitentiary in Coldwater, Michigan. Here, between the years 1928 and 1932, over 1,100 people were sterilized against their will. It was part of a state eugenics program. Eugenics is a loaded word today, but it wasn't then. Here's why. Eugenics was the brainchild of this man, Sir Francis Galton, who coined the term in 1883. Galton believed that medicine and welfare programs were destroying the power of natural selection to improve the human species. If we were to improve, he reasoned, we must take our hereditary legacy into our own hands. In 1873, Galton's cousin, the famous biologist Charles Darwin, supported his ideas, but not without reservations. Though I see much difficulty, the object is a grand one, yet I fear it is utopian. Darwin's reservations would be vindicated nearly a century later. Before the rise of Hitler in the 1930s, eugenics in Germany had few successes. Instead, German eugenicists looked to America for leadership. Harry Laughlin and Charles Davenport of the American Eugenics Society maintained close ties with German eugenics societies even after the Nazis came to power in Germany. Both Germany and the United States actively pursued eugenic programs. In the U.S., this often took the form of bitter family contests at state fairs. Scientists would construct pedigrees to determine the genetic quality of families in various categories. Families that won would find themselves on the front page of newspapers and have a brief moment of glory. In 1935, Heinrich Himmler began what was called the Lebensborn Project, which was designed to raise fatherless infants in a supportive environment, as long as they were racially pure. In 1899, Indiana passed a law making miscegenation, or interracial marriage, illegal the first law of its kind. By 1915, 28 states had similar statutes on the books, and in 1916, then Vice President Calvin Coolidge bowed to what he thought was the authority of science, saying, the biological laws tell us that certain divergent people will not mix or blend. The 1933 Nuremberg Codes outlawed, among other things, marriage between Jewish and non-Jewish German citizens. In 1927, a Virginia sterilization law was challenged in the Supreme Court in Buck v. Bell. It was upheld. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote, It is better for all the world if, instead of waiting to execute degenerate offspring for crime, or to let them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. In 1933, Germany passed a law modeled after the Virginia one. It allowed for the forced sterilization of more than 350,000 people. Harry Laughlin, the author of the Virginia law, was awarded an honorary degree from the University of Heidelberg for his work. Unfortunately, the German eugenic program did not stop there, and in the aftermath of World War II, the Allied forces found exactly where it had led. At the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunal, the Nazi defendants argued that eugenic ideals had justified their actions. From that point on, eugenics was equated with the horrors of Auschwitz and Treblinka. Most of the U.S. marriage and sterilization laws were immediately repealed. Unfortunately, in the earlier part of this century, the public, by and large, perceived the authority of scientists as absolute. Does eugenics live on today? At one time, it was accepted as perfectly good science. Some have challenged modern genetics, such as the Human Genome Project, as being at root eugenic projects. Troy Duster, a sociologist at the University of California at Berkeley, has said, When eugenics reincarnates this time, it will not come through the front door as with the Lebensborn Project. Instead, it will come by the back door, screens, treatments, and therapies. All genetics is, of course, not eugenics. But where do we draw the line? There's no easy answer to that question, at least not right now. But one thing is certain. As the philosopher George Santanaya said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. We must always be on guard, never accepting scientific authority without question.